Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. And I'm Heidi Borchers. Today we're going back to school. Are Yay, you ready? I'm ready. Got my pencils, got my pencil box. <laughs> Today's theme is back to school. And so Heidi just gave you a little hint about what she's going to share today. Tell us more about it. I am doing the look of copper enameling. It's a cool technique from Mama Aline. It's a pencil box. <laughs> She has pencils. <laughs> got plenty of pencils. Up next today, it's Candace J. Now she is taking her PJs and she is converting them into book covers. I love this idea. It's very cool. Of course, you can use any fabric, but it's really cool to use PJs. Mm -hmm. And I am getting into the mood of graffiti. Let's graffiti something. <gasps> okay. How about clothes? I'm going to show you how to transform plain t-shirts or printed t-shirts with graffiti. I love it. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Today's show theme is back to school. Now, can you tell when Heidi and I went to school, we both have tie-dye on. <laughs> Does that give a little hint as to when we were in school? But tie-dye is popular now. Oh, does that mean that we're students now? <laughs> I think we hit it the first time around. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it's been a long, long time <laughs> since I've been in school. How about you? Me too. <laughs> Even longer. <laughs> so, thankfully, Heidi has grandkids because that helps us to Kind of keep in touch in what's going on in well, school. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, some of them are even out of school now. Mm hmm Yeah, so you can, I mean, everybody needs a pencil box, right? Yes, I mean, even, even if you, you're not in school. Yeah, even you need a pencil box. I need a pencil box. And this is awesome because it gives the effect of tie-dye. I know that's not what you call it, but I look at this and I see tie-dye. And that's okay. So, so you get your paint together and you get your glue together and we mix them together and check out what we do. Let's get together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the supplies that you need to make this project. Uh, the wooden box, and I picked one that has a little indentation here so that I can fill it up with my, my glue and paint. And of course you need Aline's Original Tacky Glue in the gold bottle. I chose the five ounce because I'm gonna be using a little bit more glue today and it's just perfect for the use that, I'm, um, that I have today. I think you're gonna be using a lot more today. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. Um, some corsage pins, I like the ones that have the heads on just because they're, they're longer and also toothpicks or wooden skewers, and that'll help you to mix. So let me show you how to get started. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, we are going to first paint all around the box and the bottom. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to paint the bottom. Good job, Heidi. <laughs> and I've taped it off with the blue painter's tape so that when I go to put my mixture of glue and paint, then I can, um, I can just take it off and I don't have to repaint anything. So I'm gonna pull this out for a second and I'm gonna put some glue and I'm gonna need you to kind of help me mix the glue and the paint together. You just direct me in the right spot and I'm your little worker bee. <laughs> okay, we need um, one big glob for our base color and then I've got three other colors. Now remember, this is glue. And you really don't need quite as much. I don't even need to do, but you oh, need one oh, wait, big one. Wait, wait, that means we can make more projects. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's put, I'm going to put white paint into the white glue. Now that's going to, I don't want to confuse anybody. <laughs> and why do you do that? Because if you put, if you didn't put any white paint into the white glue, you're going to have it clear when it, when it dries. Because Aline's original tacky glue dries clear. Now this looks like an egg. <laughs> Sunny side up. <laughs> and you can do as many colors as you want. Um, just keep in mind that, uh, yeah, if you just start, mix, whoops, mix, mix, mix. Just start mixing. With the skewer. Did, did I grab works. the right uh -huh. tool? That works. 
And you got to make sure that you mix it where you don't see any of the glue. I and you'll have trouble because, you know, you can't see the white on white, but just keep mixing. You can kind of tell the difference between the glues over here and then the paints there. So you got to mix it all around. I, I kind of put the it edge. close together, didn't I? Heidi's making scrambled eggs over yeah. there. <laughs> so it's just glue and paint. And you know, any acrylic paint that I found works. You don't have to, to have a particular brand. Any of them work? Since the theme of our project today is back to school, keep in mind the kids love to do this step. Get them involved with all of this project, but... And make sure that they mix it until there's no glue, or that you can't see the glue. See like right here, right there you can see that glue. You want to make sure that you you mix it. <laughs> and mix, all, mix, mix. Yeah, all the paints do add, um, act a little different. See how this pink is just a little grainy? It's okay, because it just, it's just a different brand. I think we're just about ready. All right, I'm not sure if I got the edge of all of this here. Uh-oh, I don't want to get fired from my job now. I just put <laughs> a little bit of that turquoise in there. That's but I think, okay. I think we're okay. Oh, you're ready for this, aren't you? I think you? we're ready. So let's see if we can get it into, if I can do this right. I'll hold. Does that help? We're going to put it into here. <laughs> How about if you hold it that way? Let me get this in. <laughs> I think I got you. Wait. Wait, let me move this down. <laughs> do, 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 do. There, there you go. go. <laughs> we need about six hands here. The magic of helpers. You really don't need six hands when you're doing this project. Just when you're, just when you're filming it. <laughs> and see how I even went over my blue tape. See, but that, that's, that's why it's good to have that yeah. blue tape there. So you're really putting a generous coat of that on. Yeah, and you know what? I'm going to switch to a, a toothpick. because I like, and I'm just kind of spreading it out. Spread, spread, spread. And you kind of, you have to work a little bit fast to get that smooth. How about if you add a little bit more down at the oh, end okay. there for I me. can do that. Because it does start to... Um, well, you have, you have time to work with it, you right? You have time, uh-huh. But, you know, we're, you have a large area here. I think you mixed just the right amount, I actually. Think I too. Isn't that amazing? I must have done this before. I think so. <laughs> Isn't that funny that sometimes you kind of panic? It's like, oh my God, it's going to dry. It's not really going to dry. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> you have plenty of time to spread it, it out. It takes a long time for it to set. Okay, let's kind of... So now we're shaking it down. Now the fun comes. Okay, you take the other colors that you've mixed and you just kind of glob them Drop them. Now Is this that a technical term? Yeah, glob. <laughs> now this particular design that I'm doing today, it just is putting dots on. You will find, the kids are going to find their own way, you're going to find your own way. You know what, do you have enough white? You, how about taking some of that yellow and, and start um, that piece that I left over there. What I meant to say to begin with too is on this project you almost always mix a little extra. So take and always have a little piece of wood or something that you can make another um, I'll use that project. now that you have oh, there you go. finished. Thanks. And then what you do is you take the next color and just do little drops. Drops. And the kids will love this because it, there's just so many possibilities to this. It just you, did you oh, have my I, pink stick? I do, I do. <laughs> Here comes some pink. There's a glob. Okay, we want a little glob down here and down here. Okay, and you're going to get some other colors. I'm working, I'm working. Okay, see how when I put more right there in that yellow one, we definitely got to spread out and it just spreads out on its own. Okay, here comes the fun part. And I'm going to take also a wet wipe here to wipe my pen off every time I stroke through it. So we're going to take and just go through it. Oops, you got to be able to see it though. And then pull. And I like to clean it off. See how it you said it looked it had the look of tie dye, which is kind I, of a it cool does look. Have the look of tie dye for me, and of course the kids love that. So, if they're making this pencil box for themselves for back to school, 
tie-dye is a really neat effect. Look at how that you just pull through and here let's go to this one pull through now another thing you can do you can do color on color this yellow one here could take another little drop of like blue on top of it and we could take and put even a little bit of pink and again, draw through. I just love this. Every time you, you do this, it's, it's fun. I mean, I've been doing it for how many years? Let and me count the years, <laughs> Heidi. Isn't that cool? How are you doing on your project? See, Let's... there's enough here. I'm going to move this for a second. There's enough here for these other colors to do a lot more. Do you want to see the progress on okay. mine? I want to see yours. Look at that. Because you pulled through a lot more. So this is more marbleized. Yeah, I love that. Love, love, love that. Okay, I want to put a little bit of yellow onto this pink here. And draw through it. Now, there is a point where you have to stop because you have mud. We don't, we are not to that point. But with the kids, as they draw through, if you draw through too much, um, you will get kind of muddy colors. So you want to make sure that they, um, I mean, I've had adults when I've taught this that so they just can't seem to stop it. They just have to keep pulling through. Walk away from the project. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> One thing I do want to point out is that that white paint, you know how we were trying to flatten it out to begin with? Look at that. It's yeah. flattened on its own. Just I didn't, during the I time didn't have that you're to, working. I didn't have to tap it or anything, really. Right. And again, you can put color into color. I mean, I can just keep going and going and going. Now, when it's dry, when it starts to dry, um, it's going to probably take overnight for it to. Thank you. We'll put this down here. It's going to take overnight for it to completely dry, and um, then you would take maybe maybe a couple hours from now you'd take off your tape, and here is what you have in the morning when you take off your tape. Isn't that cool? I just love that. So when you take off the tape, you get a clean edge? You know, I had a couple little places where I didn't get the, it down, so I just took some of my paint that was on my box and just kind of touched it up, and it, just, a, just a little brush and touch up, and that's all it took. This box reminds me of a celebration. It, doesn't it? Now, here's something else. Uh, if you want to lift it up and you want legs on it, how about using bottle caps? Those are plastic water bottle caps, and you just paint them and glue them on again with the... Aline's tacky glue There's and the gold There's eco-Heidi at work. Yes. <laughs> Seems like every time I make something, I have to do eco, huh? So one more last question on this. Okay. Do you need to seal it? Um, you know, I would seal it because I like the glossiness look. I like when it's really glossy, but um, you don't have to, but I would. And you can do a brush on gloss or you can spray it on because I like it when it's glossy. Super cool, eco-Heidi. Thank you. Heidi, this vintage Aline's technique is one of my favorites. Do I always say that? You do, but I think they are all our favorites mm -hmm. because they're they're timeless. You can just use them over and over again. And there's so many people that used to do the, the actual copper enamel in the kiln. Now, if you want to make this shiny to look at like it came out of a kiln, you're going to use the Aline's uh, gloss sealer to just spray all over it and seal it. Tell me in the official copper enamel. How is that done? I know it's done in the kiln, but with what? It's done on copper. Okay. Which, copper enameling. Right, okay. And it has little particles of glass and powdered glass that you put onto the little copper pieces and you put it in the kiln. And there's usually, you can buy little kilns and you, you still can do that too. Because mm -hmm. um, I have a friend that does it and sells them in, in stores, in jewelry stores, wonderful pieces. But you put them in a kiln for, you know, however long it takes to, to melt it. And what happens is it melts the the glass powders and makes it look like that. And oh, then you can, when you go in, you can take this little wire tool when it's hot and that's how you get it to go out like that. Oh my gosh, this is so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> what were they thinking? I know. <laughs> Thank heavens for Aline's tacky glue <laughs> so that we can do something like this. Thanks, Mom. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where is she today? She's usually our audience. She's not here. 
So mm -hmm. thanks so much for sharing that mm -hmm. technique. And I have tried this also. Let me give you a little hint because you can go into the archives. I tried this with some of the other Elaine's glues mm -hmm. because you get with, I don't remember if it's fast grab or quick dry, you get a real stringy effect and it almost looked like agate. And, and a little watercolor, I mean, it, it seems to seep a lot faster too. Mm -hmm. It's really, really cool. So play with, if you want the effect that Heidi has created today, you always want to use the Aline's Original Tacky mm -hmm. Glue, but play with some of your other Aline's glues and let us know what you come up with. Lots of fun. Coming up next is Candace J. Now she is heading back to school with something that we all need. Which Pajamas? Is <laughs> Uh, that's um, I, that sounds good to me. Pajamas, you got me totally off subject when you said pajamas. So what she's doing, she's actually transforming them into book covers. Here is our creative play muse. It's Candace J. Hi, Hi Candace. Candace. Thank you, ladies. Hi, everyone. Welcome to my studio of Perpetual Mojo. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to turn an article of clothing into a book cover. I made this book cover out of a pair of pajamas and I covered my composition notebook that I keep my cool to craft notes in. Well, I decided I also need to have one for my creative play stuff and I need to have one for my art shows. Now, I went back into my tub of material that is old clothes that I can't bear to part with because I love them. This was a pair of pajama bottoms that I ordered online and fit me like a tent. So they came down to the bin in my studio and now I'm going to make book covers out of them and I'm going to show you just how easy it is. Sit back and relax because here we go. This book cover is so easy, you really only need a book, a Lean's Fabric Fusion, and some material. And I chose a pair of pajama pants with coffee cups on them that I just love. Now I opened the book up and measured the fabric to be twice the length of the open book. And that way we can make the pockets to slide the cover into. Now the first thing I did was iron a hem, top and bottom. These are the top and bottom. And the measurement from top to bottom is an inch on either side of the book. And I'm just going to fold that over and start a hem. Now I'm going to check from top to bottom and yes, I want to fold over about the same, maybe a little bit less. The flannel that I'm using is just a little bit stretchy. If you're using something that isn't stretchy at all, you want to leave at least a quarter inch above and below the book to make sure that you can slide it in. And now for the hard part, you have to open the glue. That's right. That's it. You just have to open it. I'm just going to go right along the outside edge with the glue. You can also use the tape. That works just as well. There's the top hem, and for the bottom hem it's the same thing. Now if you want to, you can check both ends to make sure that you didn't go too far off. Hold the book at both ends to make sure that you have plenty of room. For the side hems, it's going to be about the same. But this time you want to measure around your book. So that's about the center and I'm going to open up this book and 
fold it over so I can see how much room I have and I can do I could do an inch or an inch and a half hem on that end let's make sure that this is about the same yep inch or an inch and a half so let's do one of those Double check that before I do anything else. Alrighty, this looks like this could come down a little bit more, so I'm going to adjust it. I believe I had too much allowance. So it doesn't hurt to keep going back and checking. Yes, that looks right. And back to this. Same thing with the glues. Now you may have a little bit of an open seam on both ends where you folded it over. Just put a little bit inside there. Open up your seam and put your bead of glue on the edge. Now we're going to check it again. about the center fold right there. Okay, that's good. And on this side, hmm, an inch maybe. Yep. That's what I was shooting for. An inch on both ends. Now, when you go to make the pockets, you will lay your book in the center again, where the fold was, and you fold it over. Make sure that your book is in there straight. And then just put your hand on it and let it go like that just like that. Now on this one, we're going to go very close to the edge. We're going to pay attention to where the outer edge is. And that's all we are gluing. Line them up. Now I have a little overhang there, so I will probably trim that. Right on the edge. Put it back in position. Lay your book pretty close to the edge on top of the fold that you just made and fold this one over okay pull the book out line up your edges the best you can I have a little gap there so I'm going to touch that up and go right along the outside Line up the hems, line up those little edges, and 
and you're done. All you need to do now is wait until those seams dry. And I have one here that's already dry. And so cute. Slide one side in. There you go. Stand your book up. Now, if, if this is a textbook, you might not be able to do this, but the easiest way to put it on is to bend the spine backward a little bit. Put your corners on. And slide it in. Oh, I see what happened there. I got a little cockeyed. And there you are. A lovely book from some of your favorite fabric, stretchy or not, made from shirts, pajamas, robes, anything at all, and Aline's Fabric Fusion. Sweet. See how easy? I wasn't kidding. It really is just that easy. I had plenty of material to make two book covers. I used a clear glitter glue over the colors on my art show notes and a brighter glitter glue palette for creative play. I hope that you're inspired to try something like this and if you do, I hope I get to see it. Email me at Candace at CoolToCraft.com with all your stories and photos so I can share them. Thanks for letting me be part of the show today. Back to you, Tiffany and Heidi, and stay crafty, my friends. So it's time to dig into your clothing drawers, your pajama drawers. Does that sound right? Into your, into your dresser drawers? <laughs> yeah, I think you could go into your closet. I mean, there's all kinds of things that... I keep bringing things out here, so I tip I'm not going to use this anymore. I mean, it would we be have perfect. a whole rack of um, prom dress and yeah. <laughs> all sorts of t-shirts and such yeah. here in the studio. So you don't have to just do your pajamas, but I love the fabric on the pajamas. You know, when this idea first came up, I said to Heidi, do they require that in schools? And I guess that's on the list to actually you have to cover specifically your buy. When I was in the East Coast, I was actually in a large um, store, um, box store, and somebody had a shopping list. And she was frustrated because they specifically asked for fabric book covers and she couldn't find them. <sighs> she so, should have asked us. <laughs> I know. Well, and I didn't say, hey, by the way, would you like to glue one together? Um, and so Mama she was... Mama Lee would have. I know she would have. And this poor mom was so frustrated because the list is so long. I know. So how great to be able to recycle clothing that you already have so you don't have to go out and buy something new. You so. did the same thing. You recycled some clothing. I, I did. So what I wanted to do is um, graffiti. I've, have you seen some of the commercials on TV lately? A lot of the shirts are very vintage, retro, graffiti. Mm -hmm. And so you can do this technique on new t-shirts, which are really inexpensive, just plain shirts in the craft stores and these days. And let the kids have fun. And let the kids have fun or go into your closet, find some shirts that maybe have some stains, and you can add graffiti. So what I'm using is the Tulip um, fabric paint. Now these are cannons, so you have to start pumping so I can get to work. Pump, 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 pump. So here I'm going to show you how to add graffiti to your t-shirts as soon as she's finished pumping. To create my graffiti t-shirt, I am using the Tulip Fashion Graffiti Fabric Paint Cannon. These are so easy to use and you and the kids will love creating with these cannons. This is a set of colors that I selected for this shirt that has some really nice fluorescence. And what I did is I poured the paint into the cannon. I'm also using the repositionable stencils today. And I, I, this one I've used several times and I've just restored it back onto its original backing. So I'm gonna use that in just a moment. The first thing I wanna do is uh, pump this up because I, that actually, 
allows you to spray. So we're going to spell the letters L-O-V-E on this shirt. And I'm doing it upside down so you can see. So there's our L. You should be able to get several letters out of one pumping. Here I need to pump again. And it's great if you have several of these paint cannons ready to go in different colors. That will certainly speed up the process. Super cool. Now I'm switching over to my fluorescent pink. Pump it up. And we'll just add a little bit of color along the edge here. What you can also do is actually, you just don't press down on the nozzle quite as hard and you get some nice flecks of color. So we will do that here. And you can see where you can really see the spray that way. So what I did on my shirt is I did this over the entire front and back and switched the colors back and forth and then I let that dry completely. Now that my t-shirt is completely dry, I can go on to add the black. Now, you don't have to wait until this bottom layer dries in order to go on to the next steps. It, when you do that, if it, you have a lot of wet, wet paint underneath, the black would just spread out more. And so I wanted a, a crisper look to my design, so I wanted to be sure that this was completely dry. So this is my repositionable stencil that I'll put down. And on this particular design, it doesn't matter to me that I overspray. This is the Tulip Fabric Spray Paint, and the color is Asphalt. And you just give it a quick pump, pull it off, and there you have your design. So you can move this design around your shirt. I think I'll put a couple here. And again, what's nice about this is you don't have to be really neat about it. If you get your finger in it, it's okay. Don't worry about it. So do this design on the front and the back and the sleeves. Put one down here. Wherever you want this particular stencil. I just lay it onto a paper towel face down to clean it off. I want to take off that excess black because I might want to use this stencil with other colors. You can use a wet wipe also, but try and protect the back where it's still really sticky so that you can use it over and over again. So I just place that right back on its original backing. Another way that you can add designs is to use a stencil like this. And this does not have any adhesive to the back, so you just hold it. And I love how this picks up a little bit, a hint of the other pattern besides the main flower design. So we'll just move this around. I think we'll do this one here. You can actually get quite a bit of control and if you only want to do half, you can do a partial design. So have fun adding this floral design all around your shirt. I think I'm moving faster than I'm moving the shirt for you to actually see what I'm doing. The other thing you can do is come back in. I probably should wipe off the black, but I'm not going to. Come back in if you want to bring in a little bit of your other color here. Oh, I like that actually. It picked up some of the black that was on the stencil. See, that's pretty cool. So the whole idea is to continue to keep filling this up. I do have one other design here. 
that up it stuck to the table <laughs> and um, this is a cool bird stencil design from Tulip and let's see I think we'll put our little bird here and I have used these stencils many many times and they are still sticking So I'm going to continue to work on this t-shirt, add my graffiti, and show you what my finished design looks like. The front of my shirt is now complete, and you can see I've added a lot of flowers in both pink and orange, that great fluorescent color, and black. And what I forgot to mention at the beginning is what I did is I slipped in waxed paper between the front and the back. So if you don't want that design to seep through, it's a pretty light coat that you're working with anyway, but if you don't want it to seep through, use some freezer paper or a t-shirt form or put your wax paper in between the front and the back. One other hint that I want to share that I love to do is to take my scissors because these crew neck t-shirts for bigger girls, for adults, can be uh, quite tight around your neck so I actually just cut them right off. Just take your scissors and follow along that line. You could of course cut this neckline into a different style if you wanted to. and You could uh, make it larger if, if you'd like to, to have more of a square neck and kind of working upside down and backwards here, but I think you get the idea. Here we go, I'll come this direction. I'll get it. But just cut that right off. You can clean up your edge, come back and clean up the edge so that you have um, a nice clean cut line. But it's a great way to open this type of crew neck up so that it's a little bit more casual. The other thing that you can do is also then snip off the edge on the sleeves and when you wash this this curls up really nicely so you get uh, kind of a little mini ruffle on the edge on your sleeve so just cut that so that you have the two layers you could also cut one layer a little bit shorter if you want an interesting look for that but that is how you graffiti one more thing that I do want to show you is that if you have a t-shirt that already has a design on it just grab your stencil, place it down, use your spray, and you could add more interest and personalize pre-printed t-shirts also. Aren't these fabric paint cannons the coolest? Oh, they are so cool. I love that. I can't wait to try it. I love it because you don't have to use aerosols, which can mm -hmm. harm the environment, mm -hmm. and you just pump these up and, and spray and pump and spray and pump and spray and go crazy with graffiti. That sounds cool to me. And you don't have to be kids to enjoy graffiti on your shirts. So Everyone can enjoy mm -hmm. graffiti. just depends on the colors. You know, the kids like the really bright fluorescent mm -hmm. colors. I'm wow. excited. Wow. A new product to, <laughs> to work to with. play with. Fun show today. Yes. I love all of the ideas and thinking about sending the kids back to school. And I know that it's a really, really busy time for moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas as they're getting the kids ready to go back to school. But I always feel it's important that you spend time to craft and create with them. So why not do that to get them ready to go back I think to, it's really to important. class? So let's do a recap of what you created on today's show. Okay. <laughs> My pencil box. Look at I even painted the inside. I did the look of copper enameling with a Lean's tacky glue, the original Lean's tacky glue and acrylic paint. And Tiffany thinks it looks like tie-dye, but it's okay. Am I the only one who thinks and it looks like tie-dye? Also the, you know, recycled bottle caps for the feet. Cool project. Candace J transformed fabric into book covers. You can dig into your closet. And a lot of people also head on off to the thrift store and, mm -hmm. and pick up fabric, uh, pick up pieces of uh, clothing just mm -hmm. for the fabric. So you could have a lot of fun. I do, that. do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> you can have a lot of fun recovering books or lots of other uses for mm -hmm. fabric. And I showed you how to use the tulip 
paint cannons today and you can transform wearables into a fun graffiti look. You can draw and uh, write and stencil and create all sorts of fun looks on back to school wearables or anytime. And have the kids help you out because it's really important to show them that they are creative. We would like to invite you to join us at Facebook. That's facebook.com slash cool to craft. Go on over there right now and like us if you have not. <laughs> hey, like us. You can put that on your t-shirt. Yes, you can. <laughs> Which you'll find at cool. our Facebook fan page. We post information about what's going on in the Cool to Craft universe. You can find out about the upcoming shows because we give you a little sneak peek there of the photographs of upcoming mm -hmm. projects. Uh, just what's going on with Candace J. You know, she does her creative play and she posts a lot of projects that uh, her creative play group that creates. And don't forget to sign up for our newsletter because that comes out every Tuesday, and then there's almost dailies. Did you hear about the almost Wait dailies? Wait a minute. Go back to the newsletter. We're on Tuesdays and Fridays now. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you, go, you go to <laughs> cooltocraft.com, and up in the upper right-hand corner, you can sign up for the Cool to Craft Fave Crafts newsletter. That comes mm -hmm. out right into your email inbox. That's Tuesdays and Fridays. Fridays. <laughs> and don't forget that on that newsletter, all the projects that you see on the show are they have tutorials so you don't just have to watch the videos there are step-by-step -step pictures of how to do the projects. Right. some people like it that way right so when you're watching the show on Monday the newsletter that comes on Tuesday has all of the instructions mm -hmm. that you can print out and put into your own little notebook and and have fun creating mm -hmm. now you can talk about almost dailies almost dailies are almost dailies but they're not daily <laughs> uh, what? Almost. <laughs> what we do is every so often, we wanted to have an insider's club. And so every so often, <gasps> it's a club. It's, it's, it's not, well, it's kind of a secret club. <laughs> what, what we do is whenever we want to share something that's going on behind the scenes or just some interesting news or nonsense, what we do is we, we do that send you out an almost daily. And what I love is that Almost Daily started with illustrations by Heidi. So we have little stories. And recently we talked about a smile, about putting a smile on your face. We talked about dragonflies. Mm -hmm. And so Heidi did drawings. Mm -hmm. I do. And yes. I just think that brightened your day. You know, I, 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 I love getting it <laughs> on, in my email box. It's like, oh, today's an Almost Daily because it's mm -hmm. Almost Daily. Do you learn things from Almost Dailies? I you do. didn't know? I do. See, it's so insider, she doesn't even know yeah. what I'm saying. And, and then because I'm photographing here and there and, and I send her pictures, it's like, oh, look, she used my picture today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So it just depends what mood I'm in mm -hmm. as to what I want to share. You did good. So sign up for the Almost Dailies at cooltocraft.com. And don't forget the marketplace at Shop Cool to Craft because we have all kinds of cool projects. And you know, do we have time to talk about the um, Cool to Craft? connection because we haven't talked about it for a while. You know, we have not. We don't really talk about that often enough and it's time for us to get uh, to light a fire under that mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. What we did is, you know, we create so many projects here. And on, they just, they sit in our studios a lot of the time. Right. So what I decided to do is sell them on the shopcooltocraft.com site so that we can raise money for donorschoose.org. Mm -hmm. So there are projects that are sitting there right now that you can purchase and 100% of the net proceeds. Now, when I talk about that, sometimes the designer actually donates the postage. So mm -hmm. that means 100% goes to donorschoose.org. Right. Sometimes they they need help with the postage, so that portion doesn't go to donorschoose.org. Also keep in mind that these are original designer pieces. They're like one of a kind. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing when you purchase those items is you're helping get craft supplies into kids' hands in schools in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we go through the list and we find out the schools that are in need of craft supplies and we donate your money that you've paid to purchase our projects to DonorsChoose.org. And we have not talked about this recently and it's really important to us. Mm -hmm. And so what you can also do is if when you pay through shopcooltocraft.com, it is not tax deductible to you. So if you want to make sure it's tax deductible, you can actually go to our page. You click on a link and your monies go um, 
to become tax deductible, but at least it's recognized through Cool to Craft. Mm -hmm. It gets a little complicated trying to explain it. So there's Just two different there. ways that you can, mm -hmm. can donate. Be sure you go there. Thanks for bringing that up. It's really an important cause. Mm -hmm. our, our schools do not have enough money for the creative process that they need. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to talk about that right now since we're talking about yep. back to school mm -hmm. today. So I thought so. I, you're just brilliant. <laughs> I just, that's what I love about you. Yes. You are brilliant. So <laughs> I think so we've covered best. everything today. I think so. Get creative. Get inspired. Be, Be cool. Bye-bye.